Mr. Speaker, this government unequivocally supports the death penalty for murder. The law, as I would point out and explain, is formally on the books. But the court of law, the High Court and then the Court of Appeal and the Privy Council, they interpret the Constitution. They interpret the law. They interpret the statutes. And between 1993 and now, it is our opinion that the law courts have driven a veritable horse and chariot through what we considered hitherto to be the established law of the land, that is to say, death penalty for murder. The courts, in two respects, have undermined what was our view hitherto to 1993. The Pratt and Morgan case in Jamaica, and I would give the formal references shortly, stated that ruled that if you do not hang someone within five years of the date of sentence, then that death penalty cannot be carried out. The Court of Appeal went further in St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the OECS and then confirmed by the Privy Council that the death penalty in its mandatory aspect is unconstitutional. That it is unconstitutional to carry out the death penalty for murder in all cases of murder. Indeed, Mr. Speaker, and I shall make reference to the case law in my statement today. The Privy Councillor stated that the only way someone can be hanged is if it is the worst of the worst cases. And it's so ruled in the case of Daniel Dick Trimingham, alias Compe. And you know that was a particularly brutal murder. And I shall read the relevant sections, the relevant paragraphs of the Privy Council's decision in that regard. So, the death penalty, in a nutshell, is formally on the books. But for it to be applied practically, it can only be applied as judges have interpreted the Constitution not only the Constitution of St. Vincent, the Constitution of St. Lucia, St. Kitts Nevis, Belize, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, the same position has been held. You have the five-year rule, and then you have it 
even if you're within the five-year rule, you can't carry out the death penalty if it is not the worst of the worst because it is unconstitutional in law that the death penalty is mandatory. When I started to practice law over 30 years ago, we all understood that the death penalty was mandatory for murder. But the law courts have changed that by the interpretation of the Constitution. So that the only way really to address this matter is to address it by way of a constitutional change. And we sought to do that in 2009 on November the 25th. And I shall make reference to that section in the proposed constitution or the sections in the proposed constitution. But as we know, the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines rejected the constitutional change. It is true to say that there were a series of provisions because we did a complete review. I want, Mr. Speaker, because it is a forum, given the importance of this, for us to have the factual and legal position clear. The existing constitution of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in section two affirms and protects the right to life. Section two one, no person shall be deprived of his life intentionally, save in execution of the sentence of a court in respect of a criminal offense under any law of which he has been convicted. Well, that hitherto had been taken to mean that if you have a statute law which says, that is to say a law passed in parliament, which says that for murder you have the death penalty, well, then you impose the death penalty. Well, this is what the judges, the Court of Appeal and the Privy Council, have interpreted and saying it's not mandatory. The death penalty is not mandatory for murder, the way to, this is written. And they have given their reasons why. Section 5 of the Constitution goes on to state, very simply, no person shall be subjected to torture or to inhuman or degrading punishment or other treatment. And the courts, the Court of Appeal and the Privy Council have held that unless is the worst of the worst cases, the death penalty is subjecting someone to inhuman or degrading punishment or treatment. That is what the law of the land is. The, the criminal code, that's the constitutional position, as stated and interpreted, the criminal code in section 24 of Cap 171, chapter 171 says, 24 one, when, it, when any person is sentenced to death, the sentence shall direct that he is to suffer death in the manner authorized by law. And then in section 159.1, the sentence for murder is stated as the death penalty. But this is what the statute law says. The judges in interpreting the constitution, they say that these provisions which state that the death penalty, that the, the, the murder carries the death penalty, they're saying 
the way the constitution is written and both in respect of the protection of life provision and the protection from inhuman treatment that that death penalty cannot be applied mandatorily that is to say it cannot be applied in every case of murder and can only be applied in what is called the worst of the worst cases that's what the law of the land is when you take the constitution and the statute law and the judge's interpretation.